Hi, my name is Bitters and today we're going to teach you how to draw furries. I always start with a circle, and this is only, of course, doing when you're doing something anthropomorphic or cartoony, because um, real animals aren't have perfect circle heads. And we're just gonna go for three fours, because that's the easiest way to do an example. <laughs> so foxes, as you'll know, have often cheek floofs. So you can go ahead and kind of get that in there. We'll change that up later, so don't worry about that. Foxes have large pointed ears. They're different from wolves in that they have larger ears. That's one of the things you want to remember when defining different canines. Canines can be confusing. A lot of people draw a lot of the same kind of things for canines, but they have very specific characteristics. And then you want to do the eyebrows first. That defines your skeletal structure. And then from there, you can draw the muzzle. Foxes have a smaller muzzle than other canines with some little snoots. You always want to draw the mouth line directly below where the eye is. And the, the eyelid, where the eyelids come together, will always line up with the nose. Are there, is there any tip to really defining a species well? Yes, so, and I'll just do some quick examples here. Um, wolves look a lot like foxes in a lot of drawings, but wolves will have smaller ears that are a bit more rounded out. They'll still be canine ears, but they're gonna be round and really fluffy on the inside. And of course, foxes have a little fluff too, but you know. And then um, dogs, of course, have all sorts of different kinds of ears. You could go on forever. <laughs> like, you know, the floppy ones. Let's just do a little quick one here. Here's a floppy dog ear, you know, and that's, that's one example. And then you have, I don't know, so a jackal. Jackals mm -hmm. have narrower than fox's ears, but they still come to a point. Think about that they have to live in heat, so they don't have a lot of excess long fluff tuft hairs. They all have short hair. So little short hair markings like that instead of long ones like that, you see? That's like a jackal. Um, let's see, other canines. So huskies and wolves often have a lot of similar traits. Um, a lot of difference in wolves. Wolves actually have more of a rounded out feature. They have a lot more fluff, right? They're gonna just have, in general, if you wanna characterize a wolf, they have round features. So they have a longer nose that's broader than foxes, but it's rounder than a husky. So this is really quick, but. <laughs> Just floofy boys. Huskies will have more of closer to what a fox has. They have a more pointed snout, they have less fluff, but they're more boxy than a wolf, right? So if you wanna have quite drawing of a husky. <laughs> they still have big noses though, more than a of course, yeah. So eyes. Um, this comes down to characterization. If you want your fox to be you know, more seductive in nature. And this all comes down to what you're trying to draw. Are you drawing a personality trait? Are you drawing something in a story? What kind of story are you trying to tell? So I wanna have this fox kind of being sneaky because I mean, come on, that's kind of the sly fox trait, right? I'm gonna give him a little hair tooth because I mean, these are furries, not just animals. So the thing about animal eyes is they don't show as much as personality as a person's eyes, right? So you wanna give them people eyes. You wanna study how the shape of a human eye is. And that's, you know, that comes down with the practice and everything else, but the general of it is that animals will have their eye filling up most of the eyelid. There won't be a lot of whites of the eyes. You'll have pretty much this as an animal eye. 
right? But humans have an eye that has whites. And this comes with expression. This is how we tell what we do, what we do with our faces, right? This is what tells the story. So if he's being sneaky, a little bit sly, you kind of want him looking away or doing that sort of thing or something with the eyebrows where you get a little, little smirk, right? You want a little smirk with that fox. And then you clean it up. And of course, usually with this sort of thing, um, you have two different stages where you ink or you clean up your sketch. And me, I'm used to doing inks, but we're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna focus on pencils. And so then you start to do defining characters like jawline. So here's the jawline. And you got his little muzzle here. You got little dots that indicate animal whiskers. And I, I very rarely draw whiskers themselves because they just seem to mess up for me. I'm a, the, the quality of the picture, they seem to get messy visually. And so here we go, drawing kind of, if you wanna do a wave like, almost do a bust, and it usually defines from straight animal to anthropomorphic very quickly. You know, I like lots of fluff on a fox. Let's say it's winter. There you go, basic fox. And of course you can sketch out their coloration as well. I very rarely do that, but a lot of people do, so I'll put it for this case. And you can even add a semblance of color. large cat. A cat, but large. Very different from small cats. <laughs> okay, so large cats are interesting. Each specific uh, species has their different tendencies as much as um, canines do. Uh, for this purpose, we're gonna draw a female lion because, I don't know, this just sounds fun. <laughs> it's probably general, you know, like it's, it's one that kind of covers a lot of um, a lot of different species of large cats. Mountain lions are kind of similar, except for they'll have a smaller muzzle. Um, so cats in general, large cats is what I want to be referring to when I say cats in this one. Um, they're kind of square in nature. Now we always start with the circle, sure. That's what I do anyway. But they are square. So their muzzle, and this is their brow here, but I always start with the eyebrows because that denotes expression and the direction of the face. Their muzzles are square. So you're gonna have a rectangle. And then this nose that has, if you ever watch Lion King, you'll know what I'm talking about in the difference of noses. So bad lions would have this very angular, that's like terrible, but <laughs> this angular nose, but most of the lines, you know, they have a nostril that comes here and then it comes down, right? So, and never draw the entire separation between the nose. It makes them look like rabbits to me. Um, of course, you know, do what you want, but that's what it looks like to me. So don't do this. <laughs> but they have a nostril that comes down. So I like to draw that and then keep it simple, of course, in sketches, because if you draw too many lines in a sketch, it just starts to get heavy. And then also they have big, like, not lips, but muzzle lips, I guess, right? So they have this big, chunky, never be afraid to raise, muzzle lips, and even, you know, all of them do almost. So here, and then I. And they also have this big chin, and, and every one of them does. Um, Cats in general have this, where dogs have this almost flat mouth, right? Let me just do a little quick doodly thing. Cats, even small cats, will have this big, you know, the cat face, and then this big chin. 
and it seems to go back. A lot of times in the law perspectives, you won't see this area, but for this one we do. And then they also have this kind of automatic frown um, in nature, which will we'll bend the rules of nature for our purposes, as we always seem to do with furries. And then their jaw lines are also square, so you can almost always just draw squares for large cats and get away with it. Square jawline, I'm gonna add a little cheek fuzz because, you know, gotta look good. Never be afraid to erase. I erase all the time. Erasing is not a sign of success or non-success. It just it is what it is. I like to give them a little cheek. <laughs> now lions have rounded out ears, and then cats in general, large cats in general, have rounded out ears. Um, sharp pointed ears are almost, on cats are almost always for small cats. I would say I don't remember any that to have pointed ears um, besides small cats. And draw some eyeballs. So large cats do not have slitted eyes. Um, that's usually designated for smaller species of cats. Lions. Um, Tigers, mountain lions, stuff like that. They have rounded out pupils just like well, anybody else. So I'm gonna just draw dark because I want to. Now let's erase a little. I like big muzzles on lines because it's just something of a trait that I, I see. And of course, you know, your character can do whatever you want it to. It's, that's the beauty of this fandom and everything, and the beauty of drawing in general. Get a little hair tuft. make her strong. So this right here is a collarbone and necklines, and you don't want to have them directly down like that all the time, but it does, when you're sketching, it does line up nicely to do that with. And there we go. We have a nice sketchy. I'm going to fix this. Make her an outcast line. <laughs> Lion. Another thing I like to include is um, tuck this side of the ear behind the cheek fluff. It gives some dimensionality. That's just Lion. So dragons are interesting. Dragons are kind of up to interpretation because besides from in mythological mention, they don't exist. So really you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, this is my interpretation of a dragon because it's how I just learned how to draw them. It's how I, I saw them. Um, so basically I start with a horse. <laughs> and um, don't feel like you have to learn how to draw a horse before you learn how to draw a dragon. That's not how it works. Um, but this is how I learned how to do it. So basically dragons are rectangles in their head. And then you add some serpentine nature. So for this one we're going to draw the whole body. So I'm going to draw really quickly a pose. And I'll try to keep it kind of simple, but we'll see. <laughs> I always start 
when it comes down to drawing the form, I put down the rib cage and where it's facing. So this is the front of the rib cage and this is the back. This comes around. And this is not life drawing. Um, it's very different, but don't feel better. It doesn't look perfect because it's a cartoon, it's fine. All right, so draw the rib cage. And then there's a gap between this and the hip. This. We're gonna draw average body type because we're all, you know, generalizing here. I like to draw the hip bones. So that's how I learned how to draw, was drawing bones. And now we're gonna draw. So an easy trick, and you'll learn this if you ever go to art school in general, but is called contrapposto, and it, it's, it means that Basically, if you're drawing a stick figure, you have this leg doing an action, this one straight, this one re or relaxed, this one relaxed, and this one doing an action. That's basically what it is. And you can almost guarantee that no matter what you're drawing, if you draw the form in that pose, it will come out looking natural. Just how it is. So we'll go ahead and so basically when I draw a dragon, I'm drawing the jawline of a horse with a few modifications. And most people just draw a giant lizard and that's fine. But I didn't have a lot of lizards to draw from growing up. I had horses, so I drew. <laughs> that's how I modified it. I'll give him no horse ears. But then we're gonna add some craziness because why not? It's a dragon. I'm gonna add frills. So he's gonna have that kind of ear. Frilled lizard ears. And then you know, draw the other brown. And the same thing kind of goes with all animals, is that no matter if it's real or fantastical or whatever, you want to have certain line-up points. So here's the nostril, and you want it to be in line with the corner of the eye. So draw the eye here, and that means I messed up on the other side, which is fine. Things happen. Make him an ice dragon, how about that? Just match eyes with each other. I know it's a big deal. It's like, how do I get the other eye looking correct? But just it just happens. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't. Even even now. See? Check that out. And some animals you'll find that you can never really draw a true three-fourths because their muzzle makes it difficult. You'll have to add and incorporate more of a profile view, which is fine. Now this guy's gonna have slitted lids because, or slitted vision pupil, because dragon. And then I have a love for horns, obviously, as you can tell from my character itself. So I'm gonna give him some cool horns. Give him some ram horns because it's like I said earlier, dragons are kind of whatever you want them to be. I get a chance to give it some depth by putting them over here too. Let's make them go out. out. Yeah, like that. Oh, also a tip. You never want to have lines that stop at the beginning or like run into another line. You don't ever have them stop at the same point because they hide its depth. So, whereas that tip was right in line with that, I moved it because it's easier to tell. All right, got the head done. That always helps me with the rest of the body. I know a lot of people say like, oh, you shouldn't draw the head until you have the body sketched out. But I mean, honestly, I do what I want, so. <laughs> That's a lot of uh, drawing is just figuring out your way of doing things. All right, so when it comes down to chest, draw the shoulders first. That's the way I can tell best um, where the chest starts to begin. So you have the pectoral coming out from, not 100% underneath the armpit for just this case though, we're gonna say that. And then you have here, um, since dragons are not mammals, they will not have nipples, especially in this case because we're drawing for a different age group. <laughs> All right, let's see. 
All right, so then I start to define the rest of the body. Um, this is a little bit of more of a gap than I would like for um, the hip. So I'm going to adjust the hips. The body's a little too long, basically, for my taste. So generally, you can also get away with, you know, if you're drawing a masculine form, squares, if you're drawing a feminine form, more of a, well, rounded out hips, basically. It's kind of generic. I wouldn't say it's 100% the case. I think it's kind of bullshit, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so then I draw, let's say I want the hand resting here. I always draw a line to the shoulder and where the hand is, and then I find out by like, that way where the elbow should be. I think it should actually be a little higher. There we go. We'll have this hand resting behind. Draw. So legs, I draw digit to grade. Not everybody does this. Generally speaking, just draw. I do kind of a form of in between where it's not 100%. But no matter what, whether you're drawing plantigrade or digitigrade, always have the foot or the ankle or the toes, it doesn't matter in most cases with furries, right underneath the shoulders. Tail can be doing whatever. He's gonna have kind of a shorter legs in this case. I think I should probably extend that because dragons should be tall to my lizard brain. So this is the thigh. We will have kind of simplified forms in this drawing because it's just a sketch. So we're not going to be crazy on it. Knees can be complicated. Um, I tend not to try to overcomplicate them with furries because there's so much going on in the legs anyway. And that's just like drawing technique in general. It's like if you want your eyes to be somewhere, you need to draw specifically in the way you want them to be. So I don't want the eyes on the knees. It's not where the focus is. The focus is on the, usually on the face. All right, lizard feet. Let's draw some lizard feet. I like to draw big old claws. This is a paw lesson in general. Usually you can do a paw. Some people do like the way human feet are. They have large and they go down like that kind of feet. I don't do that because I think animals and that's what I like. So I do a dome shape. And then I usually to donate or usually to say like where the foot is pointing is, is a good trick to use the claws because if it's pointing out, you can direction a little easier than, you know, if it's going this way, you can see it's slightly tilted that way. If it's going that way, it's slightly tilted that way. Or it's straight on in this case. And from the side, it's kind of the same thing, but you add a little more detail. And I could do a whole section on paws and how to draw them and how to do this and that on them. But generally with lizards, claws, um, and then you can have more of a long-toed dragon, but I don't want to, so I'm not going to. And then you draw the tail. I'm gonna give this guy pretty thick, long dragon tail. And I will draw wings, don't worry. I don't charge extra for wings. Let's <laughs> give him kind of a typical, but not a typical tail. Vary your dragon form. <laughs> I 
I turn my paper a lot, so I'm trying not to do that because it's so set up. Thank you. <laughs> you kind of clean phantom lines, as I like to call them. I'll clean up perspective as well. So here's that knee I'm talking about. Mesylation is an entirely different topic of complexity, um, and I could go on for ages on that as well. But basically, if you want the simple mesylation lines or to show that your character has muscle, you have basically three points you do the set. You do the shoulder here, where it forms somewhat of a bicep, right? There you go, he has muscle because most people's arms don't have that, generally speaking. You have pectorals, which are just a certain shape. And honestly, everybody has some form of pector muscles, pectoral muscles, um, but they vary in shape and format. You have here, of course, and also one of the top three is the muscle of the thigh. And this is very generalized. It's not exactly true to form, but it's what shows muscleation. All right, let's give me some spikes. Let's try again. All right, wings. Everybody wants to know how to do wings. Let me get this hand first. Hands are also a different complex song. Today we'll just do some simple ones. It really has more to do with how you draw the wrist than which one. Perspective is a whole nother lesson. <laughs> Alright, wings. Um, wings are done differently by different people. I'm just gonna do a basic bat-like dragon wing. Um, in which case you have somewhat of a hand. If you think about how your hand works, but only have like three, it's kind of how it is. So this would be the thumb, or the palm, and the thumb. You have one, two, three bone fingers leading off of it with their multiple joints. You'll have a basic dragon wing, or a bat wing. And then of course you have this, and then a large arm muscle. I like to have it where this one leads down, and you get some depth. So now it's its own form. I'm gonna extend it here. Get some three dimensionality in it, basically. And the other one is hidden behind. So now you have. And of course, this one will have extended. How about that? It also makes it longer without drawing excess. You also want to have it tucked so you can differentiate between the three levels. Some sketch lines between it. We're not going to focus too long on this. Because it's just a sketch after all. Ta -da, you have a basic dragon. Shout out to all my amazing patrons for supporting my channel. Starting with the super fans, we have Diana Dupri, Wolf Rider, Billy Daxter, L8XL, and Cutter. Next, we have the fan tier with Dan Fox, Nova Halvern, and Solace the Wolf. And finally, we have the early access tier with Scalith, Shadowfaxi, Tyler Furlong, Tara Linus, Edith Everett, Cockernell, Katie Rose, Runes and Kaz, 
Husky Heroin, JD Lock Lead, Mitsukatsa Wild Rose, and Cosmo. In case any of you are interested in becoming a patron, I offer three rewards tiers. Early access, which gives you access to videos like these ahead of their release and your name featured in the credits. Fan, which gets you a signed fursuit photo of me, thank you note, and everything from the early access tier. And finally, Superfan, which allows you to have one of your questions asked on Ask Ash, as well as everything from the previous two tiers. Beyond all this, I will be revamping my Patreon in the coming months and adding some extra cool prizes and perks tiers, so keep your eyes peeled. Check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash The link is in the description below.